Welcome to the Help, I Have a Narcissist in My Life podcast. I'm Laurel Slade Wagoner. Episode 36, Reality Acceptance, 11 Things Narcissists Will Not Do. As I articulated in prior episodes, thank you to all of your regular listeners. Thank you for listening and for also emailing me with your questions and sharing your hearts and stories. Your openness touches my heart deeply. Your pain is not unheard and it's not disregarded. Every single day, I lift each listener and email subscriber up in prayer to our Heavenly Father to strengthen and give hope to. You are not alone, even though it feels like it at times. If you're new to this podcast, welcome, and know that I am now praying for you as well. Moving forward to today's topic, Reality Acceptance, 11 Things Narcissists Will Not Do. If only... Those are dangerous words. They kept me powerless and stuck in cyclical chaos with the narcissists in my life for years. I long for things to be different with each of the narcissists in my life. With regard to my narcissistic father, when I was a young girl, I would often say to myself, if only he would get a real job and provide for us the way other dads do, I would never have to go through being evicted again. Pertaining to my mother, when I was older and in my 30s and 40s, I would think, if only she would stop hoarding animals and living as a recluse, I would not have to live with this engulfing guilt for not giving into her manipulation and victimhood. And concerning my ex-husband, I would cry and call out to God, if only he would stop cheating and drinking so much, we could have a good life together raising our two boys. As I previously stated, the if-onlys were dangerous to me, and they are dangerous to you as well. My prayer for this podcast episode is that you, precious listeners, learn from my mistakes and be freed from your if-onlys that are oppressing you and keeping you stuck. If-only is a denial phrase. It denies the fact that someone can bring forth change to stop another person's control, abuse, manipulation, addiction, or chronic irresponsibility from overpowering him or her. If only is a protest against reality and implies powerlessness and helplessness, which can lead to hopelessness. If onlys are satanic lies straight from the wicked enemy of our souls. So how does one become freed from his or her if onlys? through reality acceptance and some reality therapy. If you haven't heard of reality therapy, it was developed by William Glasser in the 1960s and focuses on improving present circumstances and relationships and de-emphasizes discussing the past. Reality therapy postulates that our most important human needs are to be loved and to experience belongingness and that all other basic needs can be met by building strong, healthy connections with others. It teaches that we cannot control how we feel, however we can control what we think and how we behave. The goal of reality therapy is to help individuals take control of improving their own lives by learning to make healthier choices. I really respect reality therapy. It's pragmatic, empowering, and guides individuals toward making self-protective decisions and developing healthy relationships with others. I believe it is also biblical in certain ways. For example, regarding focusing on the present and not the past, Lot's wife was instructed in the Bible to resist looking back at Sodom when instructed to leave. She looked back and was turned into a pillar of salt. See Genesis 19 verse 26. Looking back and giving focus to her if-onlys and her past brought about her demise. With regard to thinking and behaving, Romans 12 2 says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. In this scripture, we are instructed to think about our thinking and behaving and make certain that they are in accordance with God's will as outlined in His holy word. And finally, pertaining to connecting with others, we as believers comprise the body of Christ and therefore have importance to the body of Christ as well as belongingness. See 1 Corinthians 12.12, 12, which says, Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. 
If we are connected to the body of Christ, the body works to ensure all of its parts or members are cared for. Reality therapy keeps us focused on changing what we can change and not on pining over the past and our if-onlys. It directs our energy toward renewing our minds with truth, which govern our behaviors and subsequently our realities. And the second we accept Christ and receive His Spirit, we become a member of the body of Christ and therefore receive belongingness and a new spiritual family. The components of reality therapy right there in the Holy Word. I love when the world operates from biblical perspective, even if it doesn't know it yet. Precious listener, just as there was no happy ending for Lot's wife because she was focusing on her if-onlys and all that she remembered in Sodom, there are no if-onlys that end well for us when we have a narcissist in our life. Learning to accept the reality of who your narcissist actually is and what he or she does and doesn't do versus your if-onlys will start you on the road to freedom. Freedom starts with reality acceptance. Acceptance of all the horridness your narcissist does and acceptance of all the good he or she does not do. Sometimes people falsely believe that acceptance and agreement are one and the same. This couldn't be further from the truth. Grieving and getting to the place of accepting the reality of your narcissist's narcissism does not mean you condone their narcissism. It simply means you are focusing on what you can control and leaving the rest in God's hands. Acceptance has nothing to do with agreement. In prior episodes, I have outlined what narcissism is and what narcissists will do. In this episode, I will review what they will not do. If only he or she would be nice and not narcissistic. Why won't he or she just act normal? I hear these explanations of protests recurrently in counseling sessions. Narcissists do not want to learn and grow. Their cognitive rigidity prevents them from seeking and engaging in the growth and change process. They are emotionally stunted and will remain so. The sooner you accept this reality, the sooner you can experience freedom. So, what is narcissistic reality? What are the 11 things narcissists will not do? I've organized them to all start with the letter A to appease my love of structure and so that you can more easily remember them. Narcissists will not. Number one, absorb wisdom and advice. Number two, admit their wrongdoings or their participation to the problem. Number three, acknowledge they caused another person stress or emotional pain. Number four, allow themselves to truly be held accountable. Number five, accept someone else's individuality or varying perspective. Number six, affirm others without a manipulative intent. Seven, adapt to meet the demands of a relationship or a circumstance. Eight, applaud another's successes because they are because they burn with envy. Number nine, appreciate others or others' efforts. Number 10, articulate their true inner feelings. And number 11, attune to others and their needs without it being for the purpose of objectifying or exploiting. This is reality. And this is your reality if you are trying to get along with a narcissist. Accept it. Surrender your if-onlys. I held on to my if-onlys far too long and I suffered greatly for doing so. Learn from my mistakes, precious listener. I'm going to end with a short story to help this hit home in your heart. It's called The Lion, the Donkey, and the Fox. The story is actually based on The Lion, the Ass, and the Fox, a fable by Aesop. I modified the story a bit to spare myself from repeatedly saying the word ass since I don't like to really say swear words. One day, a lion, a donkey, and a fox were all hunting together and caught a large quantity of game. The donkey was asked to divide the food between the three of them. This he did very fairly, giving each of them a completely equal share. The fox was well satisfied with the donkey's division of the game. However, the lion flew into a great rage over it, and with one stroke of his huge paw, he added the donkey to the pile of slain game to eat. Then the lion turned to the fox. You divide it, he roared angrily. 
The fox wasted no time in talking. He quickly piled all the game into one great heap. From this, he took a very small portion for himself. Such undesirable bits as the horns and hooves of a mountain goat and the end of an ox tail. When the lion saw this, he recovered his happy mood entirely and began devouring all the game. Who taught you to divide so fairly, he asked the fox pleasantly. I learned from the donkey, replied the fox, carefully edging away from the lion until he was safely out of the lion's sight and on his way to freedom. The moral of this story, learn from the misfortunes of others. Learn from my mistakes, precious listener. Acceptance is key. Accept narcissistic reality. Surrender your if-onlys now and remove yourself from the presence of dangerous others. If you cannot remove yourself completely, remember the acronym for detach. Don't even think about changing him or her. Healing activity for today. Prayerfully write out answers to the following questions. What are my if-onlys with regard to the narcissist in my life? Number two, what am I thinking about and doing about my if-onlys? Number three, is what I'm thinking and doing helping? Number four, if yes, how can I do more of what is helpful? If no, what can I, how can I think and what can I do differently that will be helpful? Now, convert your responses to question four into goals. What is one thing you can start doing immediately? Some power scriptures to keep in mind. You will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Isaiah 26, 3. But Lot's wife looked back and she became a pillar of salt. Genesis 19, 26. Do not say... Why were the old days better than these? For it is not wise to ask such questions. Ecclesiastes 7.10 Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Romans 12.2 Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. 1 Corinthians 12.12 Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your path straight. Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. Stay away from a fool, for you will not find knowledge on their lips. Proverbs 14, 7. As always, I'd like to end with a prayer for all of you listeners. Oh, amazing Jesus, thank you so much for loving us and giving us the powerful gifts of your Holy Spirit and of your Holy Word, Lord. We would be so lost and full of despair without your guidance. I lift up all of the listeners to you. You know their longings and you know their if-onlys. Please help them to be freed from their if-onlys and accept the reality of all that their narcissists will not do. Please guide them into living an empowered life and please heal their hurting hearts. Please use my mistakes as a guidepost to help prevent others from experiencing the same mistakes of being stuck in the if-onlys. You are a God of redemption. Redeem the listener's pain and embolden them, Lord. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Make sure to subscribe to this podcast and leave a quick rating and review on Apple Podcasts. The ratings and reviews are important as they allow others exposure to this information so that they can experience hope and help against the narcissistic control and abuse in their own lives. I want to personally say thank you to all of you who have taken the time to subscribe and or rate this podcast. It helps me tremendously with writing future podcasts and books. You can email me directly at lslade4, that's L-S-L-A-D-E, the number four, at verizon.net with your questions or topics that you would like addressed in the upcoming podcast. As I stated in the introductory podcast, this podcast series is for you listeners, and I want to address the issues that you need addressed. I will incorporate your questions as well as information from my book, Don't Let Their Crazy Make You Crazy, into the upcoming podcast. 
If you have any questions about me, my services, or would like more information on my book, Don't Let Their Crazy Make You Crazy, How to Stay Sane and Strong When the Narcissist in Your Life is Trying to Control or Abuse You, please visit my website, slade-wagoner-counselingservices.com. That's S-L-A-D-E-W-A-G-G-O-N-E-R, counselingservices.com. You can purchase the book in either paperback or ebook format on the website as well. Oh, on my website, you can also subscribe to the part of um, to be part of my email community to receive updates on future podcasts and books, as well as a free monthly tool that may help you to stay sane and strong. Thank you for listening, and God bless.